for me, uh, in drawing and working out poses and doing other things, uh, I do not have that skill that some people do. That I am slightly envious of, of being able to just whip out anything, right? Without, without any construction lines and just go for the, go for the gold. So I break my drawings down a little bit in basic shapes. And here is a little story about Chuck, right? And what he would say to people, especially if they're like, well, I can't really draw. And Chuck would say, well, can you draw a circle? I'm pretty sure everybody right now watching can draw a circle. Right? And they'd say, of course I can draw a circle. And then he would say, well, can you draw three circles? And well, sure, I could draw three circles. And then he would say, well, then I could teach you how to draw Bugs Bunny. And I have done this thousands of times. And I can tell you to a T, everyone has been able to draw Bugs Bunny. So we are going to draw Bugs Bunny today in the spirit of how Chuck would do it. And then uh, we might bust into a little Wiley Cowdy also. So I wanted to show you, a Scott, if we can do an overhead real quick. So this is my sketchbook. These are some of my characters and my stickers. That's not, that's Scotty Young, who was awesome. So today, in to give you a little bit of an example, um, I've been working on some Wiley Coyote stuff and uh, these are some sketches and it's breaking down into simple shapes and then taking those simple, simple shapes and making expressions and poses and that kind of thing. So when I'm usually sketching, I'm doing, I have a non-photo blue pencil and I keep, I butcher the name every time, Karin D. Osh, I hope, and I hope it's not ache, it's Swiss made, but this is an awesome pencil. I love using this and you'll see like the blue lines and stuff underneath. And then um, there is nothing sweeter than a Palomino Blackwing pencil. And not until two years ago did I realize that you could pull the eraser out and oh my goodness, there's more of an eraser. So just when I thought I'd used all the eraser and it was gonna be no good, I could just extend my eraser. That's a cool little trick with a black wing that I didn't learn until 15 years after finding out that there's a black wing. So what I wanted to do with you guys today is start off with Bugs Bunny. Uh, and I'm not gonna use my photo blue pencil today. I'm gonna go straight for the black wing. So let's get started. I've got my, I've got my sheet of paper. I hope you have your sheet of paper. And we're gonna start by not even drawing a character. All I want you to do in, let's say one corner here, is instead of using your wrist to draw a circle, I want you to use your elbow and your shoulder. And what does that mean? Well, what it does is it gives you, instead of kind of ticking around the corner, we're just gonna loosen up. So this is my loosen up. This is how I get a little loose in the morning. It doesn't matter if there's multiple circles over multiple circles, keep it light. Keep it very light, right? And the whole idea is to get used to smooth movement. Think of like a camera operator in a gimbal, right? And when you're that nice smooth movement. And so when I'm doing my construction lines and I'm kind of getting my shapes down, I will use my shoulder and my elbow instead of my wrist because it gets a little tight. And I learned that from a college professor who sent us out into the woods to uh, pick a stick out, and as I explain this, here's what I want you to do on your sheet of paper. I just want you to very lightly, very lightly draw a circle. Draw It can be a few circles over the top of each other, right? I've got my circle, and then about halfway through my circle, and, and guys, feel free also to post questions. Um, those will get back to me. Scott will read them off, and I will address whatever questions you might have. So I've got my, my half circle. It comes down a little bit, right, a little bit below halfway. And that just kind of lets me know where the eyes are gonna be. And then I'm going to do on this side, Bugs is gonna be, his head's gonna be a little bit off to our right, his left, okay? So these are my, here, I'll see if I can pop that in. So these are my construction lines, right? And this kind of tells me where the character is looking and what direction. And again, how I learned to, to loosen up was from my professor who sent us out into the forest. And as I do this, I want you to put a little triangle right in the crosshairs of where those lines connect. Sent us out in the forest, we had to get a stick. We had to carve that stick at the end and then we had to do an entire four hour life drawing class um, standing up with a stick and an ink bottle on the floor. So you obviously can't draw with your wrist on that one. And that helped loosen it up. All right, now here's Chuck's three circle thing. We have our one circle. Now he's looking off to the side, which means his cheeks are not gonna be equal size. So I'm gonna do one circle here. Again, just keep it loose. We're keeping it nice and light. 
It doesn't matter if it looks a little messy because we're gonna go back afterwards and we're gonna pick our final lines. And then on this side of bugs, it's gonna be a, we're gonna just call this a squashed circle, right? An oval. And those are the beginnings, right? This is the beginning to Bugs Bunny. We're gonna do the same thing with Wiley Coyote here in a bit. And what I'm gonna do is off my triangle here, all I'm gonna do is create a curved line. This is gonna be where his cheeks are, right? So that's kind of like we're the beginning to Bugs' muzzle. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna pause right there on his cheeks. So I have like where his nose is and then his cheeks. Now Bugs has his his eyes are gonna be a little, they're gonna slant a little bit back. All right. And it's gonna touch that line. Now notice when I do this line or this eye, it's gonna be a little bit bigger. Okay, a little bit bigger and uh, a little bit wider, okay, right? Because he's looking off in a direction so the eyes aren't completely uh, the same. So they're asymmetrical. All right, and then we're going to have bugs looking off to our left, his right. Usually what I'll do is fill in a little bubble there. So you got like that little, the little speck of light. Okay, so we got his eyes down. Now, Bugs's head is not a perfect half circle, right? That's just kind of um, on my bag. Uh, that's just our kind of guideline. So what we're gonna do before we get the shape of his head in is we're gonna do an eyebrow that goes up and over, right? So it's gonna go over that half circle. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side, except for the difference here is it's a little bit narrower, right? And the eye and his eyebrow line comes down and touches his eyeball at the top. All right, so everybody have that down. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have a little line come here on the side where the edge of his head is. I'm gonna add the little bump there for his nose. And Bugs Bunny is starting to come together. So if you're a fan of Chuck Jones, which I'm a huge fan of Chuck Jones and have been for a long time, which is why it thrills me to death that I get to be a part of the Chuck Jones Center for Creativity. Um, I'm going to give you a production secret and Craig said that I was right. So we're going to, we're going to see how accurate my history is. So what I want you to do is bring a diagonal line from about where the circle is and then up and then touch that eyebrow. And Ben, Michelle yes. is actually, Michelle is asking, how long have you been drawing and how did you become a professional artist? So I, as I put the tuft of hair in for bugs, I've been drawing since I was five and I remember it distinctly. And here is a, a short little kind of anecdote to that. And why I started when I was so early, why I loved it, and then what, how I be, got to do this as a profession, even though some people told me that I wasn't good enough to do this. So when I was five and in kindergarten, uh, and then as real quick, I get into this, just follow along here as I, as I get underneath, which is like a little staple, right? And this is gonna start to be where his mouth is. So when I was five and I was in kindergarten, I had a teacher, Mrs. Blackburn, and Mrs. Blackburn uh, had us do a coloring project. We had the outside of Bugs' mouth. And when I did the coloring project, I took crayons and it was a Disney coloring page. And I did whatever princess and prince drawing it was, Snow White or something like that. And uh, I colored it all in and then I took crayons and I layered over my crayons, right? And I don't know if you've ever done that with a drawing, but you kind of layer over your crayons and layer over, and then you can take scissors or, you know, kind of an edge, and then you can scrape away like designs, and then it'll reveal, um, you know, something underneath. 
And so I did that. Right. But I apparently didn't do it the right way. And I don't even know if it was completely in the lines as we put in Bugs's tongue. And she put my drawing underneath everybody else's drawing on the board because I did not do it correctly. I did not color normally, which is what I was supposed to do color normally, apparently. Right. So that kind of sucked. And then when I was in sixth grade, I was really into art still as we bring Bugs's cheeks around. And my, to get into seventh grade art, you had to be elected into that by your teacher, by your sixth grade art teacher. We'll bring his cheek over here. And uh, my sixth grade art teacher, even though she knew how much I loved art and I fully expressed how much I loved art. Now, now that we have basic shapes to his cheeks, we're gonna add some fur. He, uh, she, I said, you know, I'd really love seventh grade art. You know, this is really what I want to do and, and all this stuff. And she's like, okay. And I put everything into all of my projects. And she ended up letting a girl go into the class that was kind of a teacher's pet and not super interested in art, but art was kind of a blow off class. So she gave that to her student. And as I'm going to lift this up just a bit, we're going to get a Bugs' ears. And so I did not get to do seventh grade art because my sixth grade art teacher told me to my face that I was not good enough for seventh grade art. Now check out the shape on Bugs's ear. It's, we're gonna do one that goes up and one that goes the other way. So you can kind of see he's got these big old ears, right? So my seventh grade or my sixth grade art teacher kind of put the kibosh on that. And uh, as we get into the second year here, we're just doing the outlines, right? So my eighth grade art teacher, now you would think that's kind of discouraging and, and you know, you have a, an art teacher, no less, that's telling you you're not good enough to do any art. So maybe try something else. And uh, my eighth grade art teacher, and I, I knew this, I knew this was my purpose. My purpose was to create. And real quick, as I explain that part, notice that this side of his ear is going to be thicker than this side of his ear. So we're doing the inside of his ear right now. And uh, my eighth grade art teacher, and I, Unfortunately, I don't remember her name, but she was a wonderful woman, and I, she let me use whatever supplies I wanted, and I always finished all the, the um, projects in class, and then she would let me experiment, and she kept encouraging me to do art and create, and so what she would do is she entered some of my projects in for awards without telling me, and I ended up winning first place in those, which was pretty awesome. And that helped me and my high school art teacher further that even more. And then as I got into it, the whole idea is keep drawing, keep doing. Chuck was very famous. As we get into Bugs Bunny, you can see that we've got all our, all our lines down, right? Now we're going to go in and we're going to pick our final line. So I'm going to start to make lines a little bit darker. And then we're going to add his whiskers last. So I just kept drawing. I kept doing. And I took art classes. And I would fill sketchbooks. Um, and I would meet people. And I'm telling you, relationships are the key to everything. It is all about who you know, not about what you know. And in that relationship aspect of things, it's not about how much people do for you. It's always about how much you can do for other people. So don't do it out of a self-serving thing. Do it because you genuinely, genuinely want to help every, people. And I have found the most fulfilling relationships off of that. And it comes back to you in ways that you may not know. And that's awesome. And so I got into professional design because I wanted to go into animation and I got into Ringling School of Art Design, but I could not afford the tuition. So I went to College DuPage. I had some great professors and uh, I got into, ended up getting a job in design, learned design and became a fairly decent designer. Making a I make a living at it. I own my own studio. And I have for 12 years and then I got, and I met the Chuck Jones folks and I had asked one day and I ended up getting to become a Chuck Jones gallery fine artist. So I'd say the key to it all, keep doing it. Chuck, Chuck would say, and I don't think I finished this, would say you've got a hundred thousand bad drawings in you, right? So the faster you can get them out, the better. I still have a lot of bad drawings in me. So just keep drawing, keep drawing, keep creating, experiment with stuff. And then don't be afraid to show things. Don't be afraid to introduce yourself to people. And just remember, don't make it about yourself and what you want to gain. Make it about the other person.
Okay, so we've got bugs. If you're following along, we've got his ears. I've picked my final lines on stuff. Now the second to last thing is whiskers. And we get into the production. So depending on how much money they had in the production, Bugs Bunny either had two whiskers or three whiskers, right? Because obviously it'll take a little bit longer to ink and animate three whiskers. So today we do have in the budget three whiskers. So what I want you to do is to take from the nose and then just three whiskers. Look at that. We have the budget. <clears throat> Leon Schlesinger gave us some extra money uh, and we did our jobs. So we have Bugs Bunny. And then of course, the last thing, the last thing that you need to do is sign it. Okay. Excellent. So just like that, guys, you have drawn one of the most famous cartoon characters ever in Bugs Bunny. And do you know that What's Opera Doc featuring Bugs Bunny is considered the greatest cartoon of all time? I had, I, it, check it out. It's, Chuck's created some amazing things. All right, so there is Bugs Bunny. All right, and then let's get into our, let's get into our next character. So this is a Chuck original. Now, while Bugs Bunny wasn't a Chuck original character that he created, he did direct him in quite a few films and really did bring out his personality. So an a truck original is Wiley Cowdy. And here's a great story about Wiley Cowdy as I'm gonna teach you to draw Wiley in the, oh no, I'm falling over the cliff yet again phase or pose. So we're gonna start with three or two, one circle, right? So. And Tom is asking, what kind of pencils are you using? So I am using a Blackwing uh, Palomino, right? So if you can see this right here, oh, let's go this way. Blackwing, this is what Chuck used as well and loved this pencil. I love the way it, it, um, the lead comes out. I can be soft, I can make harder lines with it. So it's a Blackwing Palomino. And I'll just show you real quick, Scott, you can keep it on this view for overhead. Here is my... Here's my pencil case, right? Um, so what I like to do is I've got my blue line pencils, right? Which I usually do for my underdrawings. Uh, I've got my black wing. I've got charcoal pencils. Um, I've got some different shades and a little bit lighter tones. And then when I'm inking and I'm use, I like Bristol board and inking. I, I've used a lot of ink brush pens. And my favorites are the Pigma, the Sakura Pigma BB, MB, and FB. So it's a fine tip, it's a, a bold tip, and it's a medium tip, just to kind of give you, and I've found with these, in inking specifically has been, these are my favorite. I got into inking with Inktober. If you guys have ever done Inktober, you totally should. It's fantastic. It comes up in the month of October, and that's where I started experimenting with ink brush pens. So I'm going to start with a circle. Imagine that. All right. Now you notice like I've got a whole bunch of lines here, right? And my circle, I kept it pretty light. It's not a big deal. A lot of people want to make like a perfect circle and they make it very dark. We don't want to do that. This is just our construction lines. So just like we did with Bugs Bunny, we're going to start off. Um, we're going to start off with just a light, a light circle and then Wiley is going to be looking straight down the barrel here so my my eyesight line is going to be straightforward and then his eyes are going to sit a little bit lower okay so just like a little half circle line right there a little bit lower and then we're going to give him the this is the I'm falling off the cliff look like or this is the truck is coming through the tunnel painting because as we know Wiley Cody is famous for his tunnel paintings. All right, so what I want you to do is an oval on each side, almost touching this, this line right here, almost touching. And then we're gonna do one more circle right there. I'm gonna swing this a little bit this way so you can see it. There we go. All right, so this is the basis for Wiley Coyote. How's this gonna work, you ask? Great question. 
All right, so let's get into his eyeballs. So his eyes are gonna be pretty big on this, right? And they're gonna to come together in the middle. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make one eye a little bigger on the one side. And I'm not, I'm not gonna connect it all the way to the top yet. So I'm gonna make one eye a little bit bigger. And then I'm gonna have another eye, his other eye come over this way. Like so, all right, and that's the start to, to Wiley's, oh no, right? Daniel Killen, who I love and adore and is a brilliant artist, did a fantastic painting called Semi-Struck and it's with Chuck Jones Galleries and it has this look to it. It's brilliant and it celebrates Wiley Cody's tunnel paintings. All right, so we got his eyes down, right? Here's, here's the beginning to, to Wiley getting hit by the truck. Now what I want you to do is there's going to be a little, a little bump here, okay? And we're going to travel this line around his eye up. And then just like we did with bugs, we're just going to kind of start there, right? Go under. It's going to come up around here. And then right where it touches the circle, we're going to connect, kind of very lightly connect it to that oval. So uh, Wiley Cody is a Chuck Jones original character as I do the eyebrows for you. And uh, you guys follow on here with the eyebrows that come up and over. I'll usually start with, a, again, basic shape. So keep it light, right? Mine are just kind of working like so. His basic eyebrows. And then you can add, once you kind of have the lines and where you want to go, you can add a little bit of fur to it. So when Chuck was seven years old, no, yes, seven years old. He read a book. He was an avid reader. Chuck loved to read. And he read this book from Mark Twain. How many of you at seven years old are reading Mark Twain? I was not one of those. And Chuck read Roughing It. And around page 70 or 80, I forget where it is, there is a description in Roughing It about this coyote. And if you read the description of the coyote, it's very similar to what, how Wiley comes out. Um, as we get down into starting his schnoz. So um, he read this at seven and, it, and Chuck had one of those photographic memories, which is amazing and I'm slightly jealous of. And when he was 37, I believe, he, uh, the producer had asked him and Mike Maltese to come up with a, a new cartoon, new characters, right? As we follow along kind of our nose line here. And uh, Chuck remembered reading this book at age seven, roughing it. And he created Wiley Cowdy off of that book 30 years later. How awesome is that? And I'm sure out in Arizona, you got plenty of roadrunners clowning around. Um, we're going to get into some smile lines that are not so smiley because they're kind of a frown. So notice that this line touches this circle. This line here, right, kind of touches that circle. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna bring, bring that around like so, right? So this is the beginning to his look. And actually, as I look at his nose, I'm gonna go ahead and shade in his nose. So I would, we, we do this season of creativity that kind of runs around and, and we do it at libraries and we really emphasize reading because Chuck was a big reader, huge reader. He would play this game with his daughter, Linda, and she could go <clears throat> at bedtime and they would play this game and he could pick, she could pick any book out in the house, right? They had a huge, a big library as they traveled around and she could pick any library or book she wanted and he, she would bring it to him and he could recite the first line of that book to her from memory. That is amazing. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine reciting any line from any book in your house from memory? I could not. So kids, adults, read. It benefits your imagination. All right. So we've got, the, we've got his kind of sort of frown in, right? This, this look of, oh no, <clears throat> something's about to happen. Let's get his cheeks in there. Also, you should all know that Scott Ryder, who was my producer for this, 
is brilliant. And we celebrate Scott with things like Lana Scott a day on our Chuck Jones Center classes. Because Scott's just cool like that. All right. So we've got our cheeks in, right? They're kind of pointed down. It's in that, oh no, kind of phase. Let's get his neck in there. Michelle would like to know if you ever met Chuck Jones. Ah, uh, yes. So unfortunately, I never did get to meet Chuck Jones because he passed away in 2002. And my first introduction to the Chuck Jones family was meeting Craig in 2000, and I believe, seven or 2008. So unfortunately, I never did get to meet Chuck, but I have gotten to know his daughter, Linda, and love her, his grandson, Craig, and family, and they're a wonderful family, and you can tell the legacy of Chuck and his impact just by his family, who are wonderful people. So unfortunately not, but I have gotten to meet people influenced by Chuck, like Eric Goldberg. Um animator of the genie, director of Pocahontas, stuff like that. Chuck's legacy really reached far out, um, especially in the animation world. All right, we're gonna get in with the ears. I'm gonna rough in the ears. Some basic shapes, All right? And then have you guys follow along here. And then we're gonna add some detail in a bit. I did get to go to Chuck's bicentennial, which he was obviously passed by this point, but to his hundredth, birthday celebration which was amazing and that's where i met eric for the first time and a whole bunch of other very cool people um, but i was influenced even though i never met chuck i was heavily influenced by chuck i would I, again read chuck amuck his bi autobiography it's absolutely fantastic and fascinating and it gives you an inside um inside baseball into creating not just about you whether or not you you want to be an animator um, or, you know, an artist, it's really about expressing your creativity, you know, and, and how to continue to do that, how to get over hurdles, you know, like, well, I just can't think of anything. I've got a creative block. Well, he talks about that stuff. All right. So we've got our, we've got our roughing in on our ears. Right. And now because he is a coyote and <clears throat> he's not exactly about to be hit by a truck so we're going to get our lines are going to be a little have a little bit of character to them we do the outside of his ear i would also encourage anybody uh in the age of social media, you can be exposed to a, I love Instagram because it's like my creative, my creative inspiration source, right? There's so many awesome people creating so many awesome things. And I have found just reach out to people, make comments on their work, on what they're doing, ask questions. I get questions asked of me. I ask questions of other people when I'm trying to figure some stuff out. It's a great resource and don't be shy, obviously be, you know, polite and, um, and all that kind of good stuff, but really don't be shy, reach out and just ask questions, talk to people. I think you'll find that it's a, it's a great resource um, for growing as an artist and a creative. Okay, so there is the, there is the Wiley Coyote look, right? Last thing, of course, is to sign your drawing. Two down. Let's get into let's get into one more original Chuck Jones character, <clears throat> and who happens to be one of my all-time favorites. I am wearing his shorts that I designed right now. It is Marvin the Martian. So people ask kind of like what supplies and, and what kind of stuff do you use when you're creating? And 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 first, I'm gonna just let you know that you can create with anything. You really can. It it it's all about your personal preference and what you like to do. I like in sketchbooks, when I'm doing a hardbound sketchbook, I like moleskin. I, it's a little bit more expensive, but I love the paper. Um, I can use marker with it. I can use ink. Doesn't always, doesn't really bleed through that much. Um, I don't really use charcoal too much with it, but I do like those. Uh, when I'm inking and doing stuff like uh, Inktober and things like that. So Bristol board, I have, Canson here on this Bristol board, Bristol boards, Bristol board, right? You just got to find the paper that you like. I like a hundred pound. It's, it's 
pretty sturdy, right? So you can sketch on this. I'll usually do like a blue line in here or a light and then I'll ink over that, right? It's great with marker and stuff. So if you're like into comic art and stuff too, or you just like using markers and ink, Bristol, B-R-I-S-T-O-L, Bristol board. It's just the type of board that it is. And then you have different manufacturers that make it. So those are, those are a couple of things. And then when we get into like digital, like do you do digital art? I do digital art. Is it okay to do digital art? Absolutely. Should you do digital and traditional? Absolutely you should. Do, do it all. A lot of, especially if you want to get into industry work, a lot of them, there's a lot of digital going on and it's a faster work pace. So I would highly recommend apps like Procreate. Um, they're not that expensive. Photoshop now is, I believe, the full version for iPad and, and devices. Um, I like um, uh, anima uh, Animation Desk is a lot of fun to play with. And, but do both, do traditional, do digital. You should really do both. And then here's, so I like soft pastels. Uh, it's like chalk sort of, but better. Um, great for blending and getting shape, you know, like shading down. I, I like this, this is a 40, it's like just a short set. And then I've already shown you the black wing and the, and the blue line pencil. All right, let's get into, let's get into Marvin the Martian. It, and again, shocker i know for everybody watching right now guess what we're going to start with as i bring the camera down just a bit we're going to start with a circle and we're just going to do marvin's head today okay so we're going to go marvin the martian i'm going to go i'm going to go a low line look at how low i see kelly taylor welcome i can't see the full comment but i think scott can all right, and then I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go like, I, th I think we're gonna have a theme today of characters like kind of facing, looking off, tilted their heads to the yep. to the right of the page. Go ahead. Kelly, Kelly says she's geeking out that we're drawing cartoons with Ben. <laughs> well, Kelly, um, I'm geeking out that I'm drawing cartoons with you. So it's a totally mutual. All right, so let's get into Marvin. All right, there, there's my base for Marvin. Marvin is a Chuck original character, debuted in 1948. I certainly hope I have my facts right on that. I'm pretty sure I do, as we've done several events with Marvin. Um, what I'm going to do here is we're going to get this, this classic Roman helmet in, right? So I'm going to start with a circle over here. That's going to be where my visor is going to pop off from. Um, my favorite scene, and what is your favorite scene do you have a favorite Marvin the Martian moment? And mine is when Duck Dodgers busts out his disintegration proof vest and Marvin hits him with the disintegration pistol and it disintegrates everything but the vest, including Duck Dodgers. I love that cartoon. All right, so let's get into his helmet. His helmet pretty much tracks around in a circle. I love the oversized visor. We're gonna get his side panels here. His protective Spartan. I, I believe, if I'm if I'm correct, that Chuck modeled Marvin's look after after the Roman the Roman military look. All right, Robin Hood Daffy is one of my all time favorites. I just finished a painting for Chuck Jones Galleries on Robin Hood Daffy. I love Robin Hood Daffy, yoiks in a way. So. it's a nice comment from Robin. She says, this is amazing. Thank you, Robin. I am so happy that you guys jumped on. What I think is cool about this platform, by the way, well, I do love in-person stuff. I love in-person stuff because there's just so much to it and you, you feed off each other. I love this platform and what it's brought out in the fact that I can be in Bethel Springs, Tennessee on a Saturday morning at 10 a.m. my time. And you can be wherever you're at, Arizona, maybe you're in California, maybe you're across the, across the globe. And we can all be, I'm gonna fix this. We can all be sketching and drawing and creating which we would not normally be able to do unless we were all in the same place. All right, so I'm not happy with that. I'm gonna bring this back a bit like so. That's much better. Okay, see, you can make plenty of mistakes. Look at that, 100,000 bad drawings. I'm probably into one right now. All right, so we kind of have like the layout 
roughly of Marvin. Let's get this giant brush that he has on the top of his head. And then all I'm doing is roughing in my shapes right now. I'm not really adding any detail to anything. I, all I want to do is show, right, basic shapes. Amin asks uh, uh, if he has a Marco pack, and is it one of the prizes for art tag? <laughs> I don't. I don't know. Did, what prizes did we do for art? No. So we did art tag, which was amazing. And uh, at the end of art tag, I gave away five things. I gave away a Baby Yoda drawing that I did. I gave away a pencil set, just like you see in mine, as I'm going to add some detail here in Marvin's eyes. So I'm just going to start with big ovals, right? But his eyes aren't going to be like that because I'm, I'm going to, we're going to do this, the kind of the trademark scowl look. Um, the Marco pack. No, I, I didn't have that, but I did have, I did two, two drawings. I did a, and they could pick whatever they wanted. And I had a, a Robin Hood Daffy and I had a um, Bugs Bunny as Black Panther from my man Simeon. And I thought that was awesome, which was not, it stretched me a little bit as I, I'd never drawn, I had never drawn the full Black Panther suit before. So that was a lot of fun. I mean, are you ready for art tag four? So yeah, get in his eyes. And, and, and do you want to explain art tag to anyone who oh, might I'm, not? I'm know. about to. Yep, absolutely. As I'm going to explain that here as we get our eye. So what I've done is all I've done is I've created his eyebrows, right? And I'm going to leave that white. Okay. And I'm going to, cause he, I'm going to shade in Marvin's head. So that just lets me know where, where I'm shading. So ladies and gentlemen, art tag is a game we invented in our Chuck Jones class, and it's a game of collaboration. So it starts out where I will draw something, like a shape, right? And, and then I will tag somebody. So in this case, let's just say I tag a mean. And everybody draws what I, so if I draw a circle, I show everybody, and then everybody draws that circle. And then I tag somebody, like a mean. And then a mean would draw and add on to that. And Amin would, you know, whatever he wanted to do. And then he would show everybody. And then Amin would look around the Zoom room and he would tag somebody. And then they would keep building on it. And it's, we would keep building on to this drawing until everybody got a chance to add something. And that is art tag. And it's hilarious. And I've done it four times now, three with my Chuck Jones class. And then, uh, once with my Schomburg library class. So we're just going to shade his head in. So I think Amin might be ready for art tag four. And then I did a giveaway, of course, where I did the pencil set. I did, uh, what else did I do? The Baby Yoda drawing, the two drawings. And then I have a student in Chile, Amelia, and she got t-shirts. Chuck Jones official t-shirts. All right, so I've got Marvin's, right? He's got that kind of scowl in. Um, and as we've got about eight minutes left, we're gonna get into a little, a little shading here with him. So um, we haven't really done a whole lot of shading yet, right? We just kind of sketch stuff out. I'm gonna finish his brush. So we got like the bristles, right? And give it a little character. So when you're, I'm gonna move this up just a, so when, when we're working on this, right, don't, it, is, they're not perfect straight up and down lines. They curve as my pencil rolls across my page, right? They curve, they, they're bristles. So give them a little bit of character on that. And then as you do that, go ahead and pick your final lines and I'm gonna work my way around here. And then we're going to do a little shading, maybe a little cross hatching. So a bit of a different technique. All right, so I've got my Marvin. Let's go up there. There we are. I've got my Marvin down. And now I'm going to get into 
shade. So very lightly, right? It's all about finesse. And if you look at a color, a great exercise to do is to take a something in color, like a famous color painting, and look at it in black and white, and then actually recreate the painting in black and white so that you can understand like the tones and stuff um, of the painting. And it kind of gives you a better grasp on like shadows and highlights and stuff like that. So I obviously, because Marvin's head is black, right? I don't want the underside of his brush, which is gold, to be any darker than this. And I might even come in and make this a little bit darker, but I don't want to make that as dark. And let's just say my light source is coming from, my light source is coming from here. By the way, as I do that, hashtag drawathon, hashtag Tempe Arts. Marvin's got this kind of highlight on his helmet that I like to put in, if you notice. So all right, and then I'm gonna shade in this side of his helmet a little bit here. And then as I get to the top, I'm gonna just get a lot lighter and a lot lighter because obviously the light source is hitting here. I'm gonna do the same thing here. There really isn't a whole lot of shading to Marvin's head because it's, it's kind of like a black dot. So we'll shade this in. I have thoroughly enjoyed set drawing Saturday morning cartoons with you guys. Thank you so much to the Tempe Center for the Arts in hosting this. I think Drawathon is a fantastic thing. And as I understand it, uh, it was in person. And so the fact that they pulled this off in this kind of platform is awesome. The show would like to thank you for drawing Marvin as Who Marvin would? is her favorite. Who would? Michelle would. She says, thanks Michelle. for drawing Marvin. He's my favorite. <laughs> Michelle, it is my absolute pleasure as Marvin is my favorite as well. So I, I ended with my, with my Ulta. I love them all, right? But Marvin kind of holds that special place. All and right. Joanne so, and Kelly would like to also thank you for, for doing the drawathon. My pleasure, guys. My absolute pleasure. I enjoy doing this. Um, I I you you are never done growing as an artist. I am never done growing as an artist. I will I, I never want to get to the point and I never will where I've said, Oh, look, I've made it. Um, because then that means I'm I'm not growing. So don't be afraid to make mistakes. Go Bob Ross on it. Make the mistakes into birds or trees, right? Um, happy little accidents. Happy little accidents, absolutely. <laughs> Get the art of chill game from Bob Ross. It's, it's hilarious. Okay, I'm going to shade in a little bit under here. Just like that. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a little gradient fade, right? We'll go a little lighter, so it'll be a little bit darker from his face to a little lighter. There you go, a little shading. Do the same thing over here a little bit. And in the final three minutes, okay. I'm gonna leave these spots white. Because those are gonna be like my major highlights from the, from the, the light source. I'm gonna, Let's do that a little bit. And of course, the last thing that you should do with your drawing is, drum roll please, Scott, what's the last thing that you should do? Uh, sign it. Yes. Sign it, kaboom. We started out with our main man, the, the, the leader of the show, Bugs Bunny, right? And how to draw bugs and remembering Chuck's uh, encouragement to people especially ones that said they can't draw if you can draw a circle if you can draw three circles I can teach you how to draw Bugs Bunny right from Chuck Jones um, a wonderful man who did a lot of wonderful things and inspired a lot of wonderful people right so there's Bugs Bunny uh, and remember we did have in the production budget we did have money for three whiskers today so so we went with a Chuck original character and Wiley Cowdy remember Wiley Cowdy was inspired off a book 
that Chuck read when he was seven years old uh, from Mark Twain, who is one of his all-time favorite authors. The book is called Roughing It. If you look between pages 70 and 80, you'll see the, you'll read the description of the coyote, right? And this is a Chuck original character, one of the, one of the greatest chase cartoons series of all times, Wiley Cody and Roadrunner. Remember Tempe Arts draw a thon. So we, we, did, we based our Wiley Cody off two, like one circle and three ovals. And that's as simple as it was to start, all right? And then we got into my personal favorite, right? Um, even though I love them all, uh, Marvin the Martian, we started with one circle only, right? And in one circle, we were able to create with a couple of rectangles, Marvin the Martian in that scowling look that he has and pull it off. So we finished off with Marvin. Remember, Drawathon Tempe Arts. I hope you guys got some stuff out of this. Thank you so much for the comments and the questions. I hope it helped. Um, thank you so much to the Tempe. Let me just, there we go. Thank you so much to the Tempe Center for the Arts on hosting this and for having me.